Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday morning. And usually Monday morning every week for the last 10 weeks, 52 and 52. And uh, if you haven't heard yet, I'm releasing 52 new song releases in 52 consecutive weeks. And this Friday will be week 11, song 11, There Ain't No Doubt. I want to ask you, first of all, before I get started, as I always do, is to pray for me, pray for the ministry, pray for the music, pray for souls, and uh, like, follow, and a special request, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We post this content there as well, and uh, trying to get to a 1,000. It's hard, amen, but uh, but anyway, if you would please do that for me, I would appreciate it, and uh, we're going to get started. So this week, um, I... You know, when I sat out on this journey, I really didn't decide in advance um, what songs I was going to release and in what order. I just felt like maybe a week prior that I would kind of pray about it and whatever song it was, I think that uh, the Lord laid on my heart to release, then that's the one we would release. And then we would uh, we'd go to God's Word and, uh, and share a little bit of uh, the Word of God with the song. So this Friday, I'm releasing a song called There Ain't No Doubt. And um, I know a lot of my songs have the word ain't in it. You know, I'm from the South and my mama was an English teacher. So she really, she really didn't like that much. But, but there ain't no doubt. I want to tell you a little bit of background on this song. Um, had, a, had a good friend who is still battling uh, multiple sclerosis. And uh, I'd had, uh, had a meeting with her and we were talking and she was really, really burdened about it. And she said, I, you know, she shared with me the battle and the struggle with that disease and how close that uh, they were to find a cure. And I came home and uh, I was there on the couch with my guitar. And man, you know, God just hit my heart. And the word of God, the spirit just spoke to me. And, and it said to me, uh, I'm getting ready to pour out an anointing on you with this song. And I know some people hear that, but for the ones of you who know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, so I started writing this song, the lyrics of the song, and I dedicated it to her and all that struggle with that disease. So, so let's get, let's get started. But, you know, doubt, it, it comes from a lot of places, but primarily, I, you know, doubt comes from uh, naturally from within. And one of the true realities in life is, is really the battle uh, of the mind. You know what I mean? And so we battle constantly the thoughts, and a big part of that is is doubt. But doubt, you know, it can come from within. It can be uh, it can be true. I mean, it can be actual, factual, real doubt. Sometimes from within, it can actually be fabricated doubt, uh, because doubt also comes from others, right? And so I was watching something this morning. And they were talking about. Uh, how people had told them they would never um, amount to anything. And I, my comment was, well, who cares? What do they know, right? But it still happens. And when people that that you love and care for, friends and family and coworkers or whoever it may be, you know, when they start kind of planting doubt in you, some of it can be from their pessimistic, pessimistic attitude. And a lot of times it's justified. Uh, but it can come from others. But the last one I want to talk to you about is doubt can come from Satan. And, and Satan can plant that doubt in your mind. And Satan can certainly plant that doubt in, uh, in others, right? And so, but doubt is a very real thing. I want to read something to you this morning from James, uh, the first chapter. It says, James, a servant of God, and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. He said, greeting. My brethren, he said, count it all joy when you fall into different temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Doubt can be one of those things that tries, amen, it, it will try your patience. You know, when, when, you, when you stay in doubt consistently, uh, it'll get on your nerves and you know, it'll get on the nerves of other people too. But he said, verse three, knowing this, that the trying your faith, it works patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So I want to read that again. Now, verse four, James one, but 
let patience have its perfect work uh, in you, right? Let it have its perfect work. Perfect means that you grow to a level of maturity. So patience is one of the ways that we grow spiritually. How, how can you get stronger without having to learn to be patient? You know, number one, my message yesterday is you have to wait on the Lord. I mean, there's a lot going on in this world, spiritual warfare. And, uh, you know, God's not a short order cook. You know, we don't drive up to the drive up window of God and just put an order in and within two minutes, you know, it's in a bag for us and there's your order. It doesn't work like that. But verse four, let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. All right, so when you're battling with doubt, one of the things that can help with that is to be content, right? To be content. Lord, I have doubt, but I'm content that right now, this is where you have me and you're not forsaking me. You're, you are with me right now. And, and we have to embrace that. Um, in verse five, if any of you lack wisdom, I love this verse. Um, if you lack wisdom, God's word says, let him ask of God. So simply, Lord, I'm, I'm seeking wisdom because I'm, I'm in doubt right now and I don't know, I don't know what to do. Well, ask God for wisdom because wisdom will help you understand doubt. It will. Lord, what's happening? Wisdom will enlighten you and encourage you as to what's really going on and what you're feeling. And the doubt you're in the middle of is not really uh, reality, but more emotion. Now, but there again, verse five, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all liberally and it shall be given them. It should be given to you. So simply ask to give you. But, but, verse six, but let him ask in faith. Okay, what does that mean? It means, Lord, give me wisdom, but I doubt you can do it. Lord, give me wisdom, but I don't think it's going to happen. That's what he's talking about. But if you're going to ask for wisdom, then ask for wisdom and faith. This is what this looks like. Lord, give me wisdom, and I know you're going to. See, see the difference? Now, why do I know he's going to? Because the word of God says he will. Look at verse six again, or verse five again. If you lack wisdom, let him ask a God that giveth you all liberally and it shall be given him. Perfect, right? It shall be given him. Hey, Denise, how you doing? Hey, Tanya, good to see you. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. That's where the song came from. There, there ain't no doubt. Nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed, right? Wavering means that you're all over the place. Makes me think of politicians, you know, they, they call them flip-floppers, right? If you waver. For let not, listen to verse seven now, listen. This is why I think a lot of Christians, we all we really, really struggle with this. But he goes, okay, Lord, I'm gonna ask you for provision. I'm gonna ask you for faith. I'm gonna ask you for wisdom. But... I'm not going to really believe you long term. He said, let him ask, verse 7, let, for let that man not think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So in other words, when you ask for wisdom, if you ask God to remove doubt, if you don't believe he can do it, then save your breath. Why would you pray for something that you don't think is going to happen? You got to pray believing, or why would you pray? I've talked about this way in the past. You know, if you needed money, if you were broke, and you went and asked someone that was broke, I could understand you not really thinking you were going to get any money out of someone that doesn't have any money. But if you go to someone that does have money and can help you, and you feel led by God to ask them for help, and they're a child of God, then you ought to believe that God's going to provide. That's what God's word says. Look at here. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, verse six, for he that wavers like the way of the sea driven, driven and with the wind and tossed, Verse seven, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. And verse eight, finally, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You see, if we uh, cannot deal with doubt, we're unstable with everything. Doubt will destroy you. It will absolutely destroy the Christian, doubt. When you give up, let me tell you something, you're not just giving up on you, you're giving up on God. Now think about that. You're giving up on God. That's tragic. You don't think you are, 
But if you want to sit in a pity and don't think God can help you, then who are you doubting, you or God? You're doubting God because, listen, if you believe God can do what God's Word says God can do, I can tell you this, if you don't know this by now, you're not asking God enough. God's Word says that we come before the throne of grace and we pray, we pray boldly, expecting, expecting. See? But when we pray with doubt, God's word says in James 1, let that man expect to receive nothing. You don't want to get anything out of God. Think about this. And see, God knows your heart. You know, when you pray and you're saying, Lord, I know you can do it. But in your heart, you're going, but you're probably not. And here's why a lot of times I think Christians don't believe God's gonna, gonna help them because they don't feel they're good enough. And that is one of the most idiotic theologies that Christians adapt is I got to be good enough for God's word to be God's word for me. There's nothing in here that says anything about I will give wisdom liberty to those who are good enough. It doesn't say that. It says I will give liberty to all men. But you got to pray without wavering. I want to share this uh, this song, uh, There Ain't No Doubt. Um, it was an interesting song to write. I remember when I finished the lyrics, I called... Uh, my friend who I wrote the song for battling with uh, multiple sclerosis and I read the lyrics to her and she started weeping and she asked me, she said, how did you know? How did you know? And I said, I, I, and I think it's just God's, it's God's song. I think God put it in my heart to write it. It came completely out of nowhere. It really, really did. And you know, that's when you know you have a good song. I know when I first played it, just a rough of it, when I first played it, uh, this song, There Ain't No Doubt. Hey, Henry, how are you doing, brother? That When I start, first started playing it, Fran, good to see you. Um, it was it was one of those songs that another songwriter heard, and this is what they said, and it's not about me, it's about the song. It's about the message from God's Word. But they said, I wished I could, in my entire life, write a song like this. And I was, I guess I was flattered, but I was surprised more than flat, flattered. But... I want to I want to read you or not read you I have it I think I got it memorized by now <laughs> but but when I remember when I wrote the first verse here's the thing about it. your mind will lie to you your mind will tell you lies you cannot trust your mind you cannot trust your mind your mind is flesh it really is that's why doubt reigns so much in the mind and it's almost impossible to to bring it under subjection other than the truth of God's word. But when I wrote the first verse of this song, here's how it went. I've been buying the lies. My mind has been feeding me. <laughs> you relate to that? I've been buying the lies. My mind has been feeding me till they have taken from me everything that I used to be. The next line says, I've been drinking from its bitter well for way too long. But deep within, I know that I am more than strong. And that chorus is, there ain't no doubt. There ain't no fear. There ain't, uh, there ain't no chains gonna hold me down. There ain't no road that I can't walk. Hmm. There ain't no doubt. And when I wrote that song for my dear friend who had MS, I remember when we wrote the, uh, wrote the second verse of this song, the scars remain from a past that left me bound in chains, but I'm finally free from that life that had me. There ain't no doubt. I can tell you, I want to encourage you today. There ain't no doubt that God's in control. There ain't no doubt that God's a God of giving, that God's a giver of wisdom, and God is a dispeller of doubt. Doubt doesn't come from God. Doubt comes from within. It comes from others, and it comes from Satan. And it feels like sometimes it's all coming at the same time from all three sides, amen? But all I have to do in my life is go, not true, not true. Through my life, I've talked to a lot of people that have uh, 
grown up with parents that were abusive, told them they'd never amount to anything, that they were worthless and, and even worse things than that. But see, those are lies. They're lies. And I don't know why a parent would do that to a child. I think because they're damaged themselves. But there ain't no doubt that God can do anything in anyone. Because I've seen it. The things that God's done in my life. The things he's done in my church family's life. I've seen God take addictions away many, many times. I've seen God take and take broken families and mend them and put them back together. But you'll never get to God trying to find God with doubt. For those that come believing in God, you must believe when you come before God. Or why would you even go to God? There ain't no doubt. Well, I'm going to close up with this. And I thank you all for, for being part of this. And again, if you haven't yet, like, follow the Facebook page, Instagram, all that good stuff. And I finally learned how to use some of this technology. But, uh, but most importantly, if you can, go and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Daniel Curtis Music. I would appreciate that. We're trying to get that, that audience built up too so we can reach the world more effectively. But if you have doubt today, I'm just praying for you. When we'll close out with prayer. Lord, I just pray over the ones that are watching now, the ones that will watch this later, and the ones that may never, ever watch this. But right now, as always, we've always lived in a world of doubt and fear and chains. And a lot of times in our life, the chains that we put on ourselves are self-induced. But my prayer is that we will embrace this thought that you're not a God of doubt. You're a God of power. You're a God of freedom and grace so that you may break down and take away any chains, anything that hold anybody back right now in doubt and run this race with freedom so that they may reach others. And we just ask that you'll remove the doubt of those watching right now today if they're struggling with this and know that your word says there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ. Jesus paid it all. We thank you, Lord, for that. We give you all that we are, the best we can do in light of all of our mistakes. We're not perfect. That's why we needed Christ. But we thank you today, and we pray for your anointing that we can reach a lost world. In Christ's name, amen. Amen, y'all. Good to be here. Thank y'all for watching this. If you don't mind, share it to your page or tell someone about it. Week 11. 52 and 52, this Friday we'll be releasing the song, There Ain't No Doubt. Or my mother would say, There Isn't No Doubt. But I like Ain't Better. <laughs> I like Ain't Better. Oh, Jerry Blount, good to see you jump, dropping in here. Um, I, <laughs> I just want to make sure that everyone uh, just don't doubt God today. Don't, don't doubt God. Why would you? Word of God says, Jesus said, if you're in me and I am in you, we can do all things, right? So just plug in, plug into the Lord today. Just love your life as a Christian. But understand when I read earlier in James 1, verse 2, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into differing temptations. Count it all joy. So when you have a struggle, when you doubt, and you fall into something today, you know, <laughs> you step in it, so to speak. What are you supposed to do? What sometimes happens is we beat ourselves up. No, no, no. James says in verse two, he says, count it all joy. Man, I'm so glad that I'm being tempted right now. I mean, it, it sure beats beating yourself up over it. Count it all joy. This is going to be an opportunity. Either through the Lord, I'm going, to, I'm going to get through it and I'm going to defeat it with God's power. And even if I fall from it, I'm going to learn and I'm going to ask God's grace and forgiveness. Either way, amen? Either way, it's all good. God's grace is sufficient for everything that we go through in life. I love God's word because it's true. As I close up here, if you're struggling today, just be encouraged that you're learning. And as in one of the other songs I wrote, thank God for the hard times 
And in that song, the lyric says, and burdens were lessons that later turned into blessings. Pray for one another, be strengthened by one another, be encouraged by one another. Janice Rogers, good to see you jumping on here a little bit late. I'm almost done, but God bless you. I love you. And uh, if you can, pray for me every day because uh, we're out there trying to battle for the Lord and, you know, preaching and teaching and singing and hopefully driving the devil nuts. So, <laughs> God bless y'all all. Thanks for being here. Every Monday around 9 a.m. Central, we go live just as we're doing right now as we kick off each week. This Friday, there is no doubt is the song. So I'll be putting a pre-saved link out there for Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes. It'll be on all of all of that. It'll be on YouTube and it'll be on my Facebook page, Instagram, uh, all of those things. And so anyway, Alan Grigsby jumping on here late. You know, I, maybe I should just keep talking because people keep joining on. But Alan, thank you for everything you did at camp as always. And uh, we love you for being being part of God's, uh, God's army. So uh, this Friday, again, song number 11, 52 and 52. 52 new song releases in 52 consecutive weeks. This is week 11. We're almost a fourth of the way through this journey. It's hard to believe it's going by fast, but... Next May, 2025, I, I will have released 52 new songs uh, out there, all bragging on Jesus, amen. My daddy used to say, son, if you run out of things to say, he said, just brag on Jesus. That's what he used to say. And so I'm gonna do that. Brag on Jesus. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Fight every day for Jesus. Denise said, I woke up singing one of your songs the other morning. I, I don't know which one it was. It might have been, nope, still don't care. <laughs> but that's a good one if you're battling the devil uh, in the morning. So, uh, but anyway, if you want to check out, nope, still don't care, it's on YouTube. It was my response to what I think about the devil. <laughs> so anyway, check it out. God bless all of y'all. Thank you for your love and your prayers. I'm praying for you. And uh, until next time. We'll be putting reels on every, every day as I always try to do. So uh, just pray for me that I keep, keep on keeping on. Amen. If I can help you, shoot me a message. If you need prayer, let me know. I can't pray for you if you don't let me know. That's on you if you don't let me know. So God bless you. Have a good rest of the day. And until next time, God loves you.